In the last video, we saw how to give our unit some basic stats and the ability to attack their enemies. In this video, we are going to be implementing some HP bars for our units and our enemies and floating text so, so that we can see how much damage was dealt in every hit. The only new element in our scene is that now every unit has an HP bar and also every enemy has one of those. Also, in our project, we are going to need to have one floating text prefab. Let's take a closer look to one of our HP bars. The HP bar is just an UI slider. You can create one right here by selecting UI and slider set to an world space canvas in this element we also have an hp bar position script now in the actual slider we the first thing we are going to do is to disable the handle and the handle slide area because our slider won't be interactable the only three properties we care about our slider is the max value, the minimum value, and the current value of the slider. That's everything we need of this component. That's everything we are going to be using of this slider. Our HP bar position script only has three variables, a distance in Y, distance in Z, and a transform for the owner of this HP bar. On the update function of this script, the first thing we are going to be doing is to set the Euler angles of our canvas equal to the Euler angles of our main camera. This is so that the HP bar is always going to be looking directly at the camera. Now we are going to make a new vector tree and set it to the owner position but with a slight variation in the Y axis and the Z axis. Then we are going to set this new vector tree to the position of the transform of our HP bar. Now let's take a look at the floating text script. This script is also very short and the only thing it does is on, the, on its initialization it sets the damage variable we assign to it to the text of the text mesh that is going to be the actual text we are going to see. Then it, it does the same thing we did with the HP bars. It sets the text mesh object Euler angles equal to the Euler angles of our main camera so that our floating text are also always looking at the camera. Now let's see how this floating text works. When we hit play, we can see that the object gets the value we have on the floating text script. Then it does this animation where it goes up, it gets bigger, then shrinks, and then deletes itself. Now to make this animation, the first thing we have to do is to select the object on the hierarchy that we want to animate then we have to open the animation window, which is right here. I have it already open. And we have to make this animation. Now, on the animation window, we have to select the properties of the object that we want to animate. In this case, we are going to be using the position and the scale of the object. Then, with this button right here, we are going to add keyframes to our animation and on those keyframes, we are going to set the values right here on the object itself that we want the object to have on that keyframe. So let's take a closer look at that. We can expand the properties that we are animating in the animation window. And if I hit play, we can see the animation looping and happening in our scene. Let's see, on the first keyframe, we have a Y position of zero. And in the last keyframe, we have 
a y position of 1.5. That's everything you have to do to make the object go from down to up. To animate the scale of the object, you have to do the same. You have to go to the keyframes of your animation and assign the values you want that property of the object to have. As you can see, on the first frame, we have a scale of zero. On the second frame, we have a scale of one. We keep that scale on the third frame of our animation. And on the last frame, we go to a scale of zero. The animation window or the animation system is going to handle the um, interpolation between these values automatically. If you want to see what's really happening, you can also open the curves of the animation. As you can see, here is how the scale is going to vary. It's a nice curve, it's not a linear, linear variation like we have in the position. There is one last thing to say about this animation. As we can see here, we have an event named destroy me. To add events to your animation, just use this button right here that is named add event. So let's see this event. When we click it, we can see that in the inspector, we have the animation event and the function destroy me. In this animation events, you can access any function that is present on the scripts that the object you are animating has. So we can use the destroy me function that we have in the by text script through this animation event. And that's it. That is how our floating text does everything it does. So now we have these HP bars and we have these floating text and how do we use them? Now we have to see our root script and we can see that we have some new variables on our root script. First, under the other section, we have, we have a reference to our HP bar, a fake time set to six seconds or six, and a reference to the floating text that is going to be our floating text prefab that we are going to be instantiating every time this unit takes damage. In order to do so, we have to add some functionality to our take damage function. Remember, where what the function that we use when we hit the units. And now we have a section for our HP bar and a section for our floating text. The first thing we have to do to use our HP bar is to set its values on the initialization of our root script. As you can see, we set the maximum value of our HP bar to the initial HP of the unit. Also, we do the same with the current value of our HP bar. Also, we invoke our fade life bar function with a delay of the fade time. Let's take a look at this fade life bar function. This function is only to hide the HP bar if our unit has its maximum HP, because if the unit is already full of HP, we don't need to see the HP bar. So when this function is executed, we check if the current value of the HP bar is equals to its max value, to its max value. And if it is, we set the HP bar game object to inactive. So back to our take damage function. Once we get our real damage and our HP after this damage, the, what we have to do is to make sure that our HP bar is active and set its current value to the new HP of the unit. Also, we invoke the fade life bar function because in the future we are going to have some healing abilities. The only thing we have to do to use our floating text is to 
instantiate a copy of our floating text prefab just a little over the position of our unit so that it looks a little better. The animation on, of our floating text is going to take care of the rest. Also, we have to set the damage property of our floating text script to the real damage we just calculated the unit is going to receive. And that's it. That's everything we have to do to give our units their HP bars and to have some floating text in our combat. On the next video, we are going to be making some distance attacks with projectiles and also healing. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.